Uh, here we go. Uh, welcome to uh, Live from America podcast. This is Hatem along with uh, Noam Dorman, the owner of the legendary comedy cellar uh, uh, that hopefully will be open very soon. So Noam can go back to Norm and be happy because I like him when he's happy more. <laughs> <laughs> and our good friend, an amazing guy on and off the field. Um, that's the FBI field I'm talking about. Uh, he's a former FBI agent, uh, current analysis for uh, MSNBC, author of Messing with the Enemy, and the only FBI agent that follows me only on Twitter. The rest follows me everywhere, but, you know. So, welcome. <laughs> Clint Watts that's a, is here. That's a great line, by the way. That's an excellent line. It, All right. Is that a new one, or did you just break that out? No, just now. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm known for these things, you know. That's why. You I, should keep that one. That's yeah, good. I was just known for it. <laughs> so, Clint, so good to have you again, you know. Yeah, thanks oh, for having wow. me on. Are you okay with the pandemic and all this crazy stuff? Yeah, you know. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uncertainty is is today. It's tomorrow, uh, right? Yeah. Like, we'll, we'll see what shakes out. But, yeah, we've been lucky. Um, everyone's been healthy in my family. Uh, my folks have been good. That's what I've mostly been worried about because they're in their 70s. So, you yeah. know, I, I was mostly worried, you know, for them. And, uh, yeah, every day is a Tuesday now, right? Today uh. is Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? I don't even know. Today is actually actual Tuesday. They uh, all feel yeah. like Tuesday. But this so. is this is your time. Uh, to, I mean, you're, you're, uh, the last few years you've been very hot, which is great, you know. Uh, but this is your time, the election time, right? Yeah, I am not. I have not been this busy. Yeah, in four years. Yeah, yeah, this has been like crazy. Mostly because everyone's on Zoom, and so every time you want to tell somebody like, "Hey, let's work on this," or "Hey, you need to do this," you have to schedule a Zoom call and you know sit around and wait, as opposed to just calling them on the phone or, yeah. or walking next door and being like, hey, why don't we do this? Uh, very true. So I want to I wanna talk about, you know, I'm sharing on the screen right now, one of your great Oh, yeah, tweets. yeah. And if you don't follow Clint Watts on Twitter, you should, because he's one of the few people they actually uh, will get right information. So this tweet was amazing. <laughs> and, and, and really, um, can you tell us a little bit? We almost didn't write this one, by the way. Oh, really? I didn't think anybody would be interested. I was like, I don't think anybody cares about this. It was like a month ago, and we sat on it. And we, we thought about making it into a TV show for like a two-hour thing. We might do that yet, but um, so yeah. So can you tell so, us about, about it? Well, uh, so... For the listeners, been, uh, because a lot yeah. of people listen, don't watch, so... Uh, so I got two... I have two teams that are tracking uh, disinformation around the election. And that started off like a year and a half ago. And that was mostly... Back then, it was about Russia, Iran, and China. Mm -hmm. And now it almost seems not that very interesting compared to everything else that's going on. You know, once it turned to the pandemic, we shifted to pandemic dis disinfo and it started off with like Russia, Iran, China. What, what were they saying? But then it was like, who are all these guys with fake cures and sort of fraudsters? And then who's using it for social manipulation, that sort of stuff. Then the protest happened like, two months later. Right. And so that created another wave of it. And so then that, you know, <laughs> Russia, Iran, China, disinfo becomes COVID, becomes protest, becomes election, right? Everything's just converging right yeah. now, the last 60 days. And so you could just see these like disaster scenarios. And I would meet with different folks in the government and in like uh, Silicon Valley. And you you could just get into a discussion. And you're like, holy cow, this is going to be a disaster. And so, so, so for the listeners that not watching, uh, the title is seven potential disinformation disasters heading into the election 2020. So Clint put seven and, points. Yeah, yeah, and and so the seven of the seven, we already have a, a bunch of them. But just for the listeners, you know, number one is the mail-in ballot conspiracies and threats to delay the election. And it was so funny. We were, I was so behind writing this, and then Trump tweeted about a delay in the election like four hours after I got <laughs> this out, and I was like, "Thank God I got that out the door uh, before he tweeted about it." Um, but essentially, you know, people just not being sure how to vote or if their votes and there's some legitimacy to the uh, mail-in ballot stuff too in, in terms of the post office and all this sort of stuff but also just the conspiracies around it are, are truly insane um the other one is uh if one of the co candidates got COVID 19 i mean i think i was on with you guys i had been on bill maher i don't know a little over a year ago and i made the offhanded joke that like what was this election going to be cocoon too I remember right? like yeah. uh, all the candidates are in the upper seventies. Bill Maher did not like that comment. He kind of was like, Whoa, you know, you can't make fun of old people, whatever. I was making a legitimate point that I remember. No, Noam didn't like it too. 
<laughs> right, Nom? <laughs> oh, I'm going. Go on. Well, my, I was trying to make a legitimate point that the actuarial odds of any of those three candidates winning is one in three that they would pass away potentially or become uh, in incapable, right, of delivering through on their duties during their term. Like if you just kind of look at it could be everything from uh, dementia to, you know, falling ill or just dying of natural causes. Now you add a pandemic that and it is truly frightening. I, I mean, in all betting, I mean, I don't know who's going to win the election, but if Biden wins, I mean, Kamala Harris may very well become the first female president of the United States. And it's not because I'm trying to be mean to Joe Biden. He is almost 80 years old. You know, he's going to be in his 80s by the time this comes through. I remember as a kid, as everyone was talking about Reagan. I mean, Reagan was in his late 60s, early 70s, you know, at this point where this is highly stressful time. We have a pandemic that's out there. So that was the second one. Uh, Adam, what was the third one? The third uh, one was I'll, around. I'll um, Put it back on the screen. Yeah. Yeah, the third one was, oh, even about today, which is we're not going to know the results of the election on election night, which means everyone's going to claim that they won, right, or try and advance that they won. The public's going to be super confused. We've gotten in this habit, like we did last time I was at Comedy Cellar on election night. You know, we said we watched the results, and then at least by the end of the night, we kind of know, or even if it's close, we know by morning, 2000 being an exception. We're it, it, from some of the election officials I've seen and heard, they they know it will take them at least 10 days to confirm the results. So you can imagine that 10 days after votes go in, it's going to be a disaster. Axios did a really cool thing today where they showed that no matter the actual outcome on election night, it looks like Trump will have an overwhelming victory just based on in-person voting with none of the ballots being counted. So you can just imagine how this will turn insane and there's going to be crazy. The Russians are already playing on this one really, really heavy with mail-in ballots. Um, mobilization, holy cow, is it happening? I, there's another big mobilization coming up at the end of September where we picked up on it yesterday, but we've seen it around each of these uh, mix of peaceful protests with violent protests, with standoffs, uh, the three busloads of Antifa text message conspiracy where people are being surrounded you know, in different places in the United States by vigilante groups based on this conspiracy, they were Antifa. The most frightening one being the family that was camped in a bus out in the state of Washington that was surrounded by a vigilante group because they heard the three busloads of Antifa conspiracy. So that I think is the most concerning, the one I worry about the most is the outbreak of violence and mobilization. Um, five, the cyber attack, I feel like is the least severe uh, that, you know, there'd be some sort of cyber attack on election day. Man, it, all the other disasters seem like they're already happening. Uh, the, the chaos in between Election Day and Inauguration Day, um, I don't think anyone thinks if it was close, we would have the 2000 scenario where Bush versus Gore, while it was highly contentious, it wasn't insane. Uh, this time it will be crazy if it's contentious. And then uh, the last one, uh, if President Trump wins, is going to happen probably, which is he'll win the electoral college again and, and lose the popular vote. And then this really for like adversaries of democracy is just going to be devastating for us because they keep saying, uh, Putin loves this line. He's like, why would you talk to me about democracy when uh, the losing vote getter wins, you know, about half the time. And they love to point that out. He's like, why, <laughs> why do you give me a hard time about stuffing ballots in Moscow when, you know, your president didn't win the last election. So it, it and it's a valid point. I, I think you start to see some weirdness uh, unfold in the United States where if the minority get vote getter each time still becomes president and then advances an agenda on a majority of the population, you get in a really weird situation in the United States um, where, you know, Cuomo brought up during the pandemic, you know, we contribute more than any state in New York uh, to the federal uh, budget and yet we need ventilators and you're not helping us out for partisan sort of means this could really sort of unravel over time in a very strange way um so those are the seven i could probably come up with more but i mean i, I feel like many of those are already happening just naturally uh, as we head into election day so well clint that's that's pretty it's pretty good by the way I, you know i'm in such a dark place right now but just in no particular order. I, I, Cuomo's argument there was pretty, 
weak. I mean, this, this doesn't undermine sure. your point. I mean, the, especially for a liberal who is always talking about, you know, paying fair share. We, New York pays more because we have so many billionaires. And now yes. what, so that's what's where Cuomo, the wealth is concentrated. Yeah. yeah. So what's Cuomo's point now is that because we have billionaires, you owe us like, no, we have, we, New York is paying more because our billionaires pay a lot in taxes. And what does that have to do with anything? I mean, every, you know, people should get the ventilators or not. I don't know the details, but it's like all of a sudden it's the like state's rights and, and New York is entitled because our billionaire. No, I thought you stand for, you come from the party that believes the billionaires should be paying more. Like what he wants something in return for that. I mean, it does it's like, I mean, you can't have it both ways. We, but anyway, that's beside the point. Yeah, Putin does have a good line there. The mm -hmm. electoral college, electoral college is really difficult to explain to people. I'm gonna use that line too because it makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, it's true. I mean, he's uh, that's the one weird wrinkle of that article is it's not really disinformation, other than you know they'll put out disinformation about it. But it's how, how true. many from it's, these seven it's, points, Clint, that you think are happening because? President Trump is one of the um, options. Like um, it was like like Bush versus Gore. It was just like worst situation yet. Nothing really happened. Right. Uh, four or seven. You know. I mean, he's he's a, especially in the mobilization. You know, category. He's made several statements which have been signals to certain communities, and we see it on social media. I mean, they literally copy paste text or clips from his speech where he says. You may have to take it in your own hands and they go okay right like what are you doing and i think uh for a lot of folks in the federal government right now who are trying to do election defense and trying to like stabilize everything they're just like shaking their heads like holy cow man you're, how hard do you want to make life for me and then if they speak up they get their risk of being fired i mean that's part of the dni's you know comments over the weekend about he's not going to do election briefings anymore well it was already impossible. I mean, I, that guy. So it, let's 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 stop on there. By the way, it keeps coming to my head. Like, what if what if the issue was reversed and it was like a a, a very poor state with a lot of uh, poor minorities, like Mississippi or something? Sure. And Cuomo said, "You guys are a bunch of leeches. You barely pay anything in, in taxes, and now yeah, you yeah. need your ventilators." I mean, this is such a it's a, it's a very Trumpian way to it's think. It's a terrible actually. logic that they that yeah, they yeah. that they, they stepped and and nobody called them on it, of course, because no one will call anybody. Uh, on the left on anything, but it, I, I'm, I'm, so, so the DNI thing. So um, the argument that I heard the guys say was they had some kind of briefing and of course it all immediately leaked. Sure. And he's like, no more of this. Uh, we're going to put it in writing from now on and that's it. Now, um, is that a legitimate, is that a legitimate argument? No, uh, because look, they do the written assessments as it is now, but the whole point of the written assessments is like, how did you arrive at this assessment? This is the same, you know, process we pursue in everything in the government, right? Justice Department, whatever it is. You can't just write stuff down because then it's like, if you're not really held to be challenged on it, then it's a bunch of nonsense. And that's what the oversight of the committee is for. And, you know, the other thing is like, reckless wait, statement. Wait, wait, let me stop. Cause I actually, yeah. agree, don't, I actually agree with you, I think, but uh, it's still a legitimate question. So how do we handle the leaks at, at, at the point where you know basically for certain that if you brief these people it's going to show up in the new york times you know it it's never not happened sure and what how do i have my own ideas but how would you handle it as uh, the executive um honestly like in the weird context it is in i would kind of pursue a public hearing rather than a closed door one, then whatever you say is like actually out there and then the people can watch it. The other part is then- Yeah, but then the Russians, could, the Russians could trace back the sources of intelligence or something. They yeah, I, I mean, you could still, even the stuff that got leaked out, this is where it's a little kind of flimsy with Radcliffe is the stuff that got leaked out is not sources and methods kind of stuff. Uh, like, look, you can, you can go look at what the Russians are putting out right now. <laughs> and they are direct mailing to Ron Johnson at the Senate. <laughs> from Ukraine, you know, dirt on Biden or whatever. This is openly in the news. I, I mean, I don't really think there's a whole lot. What, what's of, your uh, idea, Noam? Well, I tell, what I would do is I would, I would drastically limit, I would take the Senate majority leader and the House majority leader, or the Speaker of the House, I guess, and the 
the committee chairman or whatever it is. You know, I'm, well, I don't know. that's the gang of eight yeah. usually, you know, yeah. that they tried to do, but that kind of fell apart with the Nunes fiasco going to the White House and getting yeah. things selectively declassified or whatever. Yeah, but that's what but, I would do. I would, I would, I would, I would take it down to such a small number that a leak would be very difficult uh, to occur without, you know, being obvious. And then I'd tell them, listen, and if this one leaks from now on, no more meetings. That's what I tell them because that's perfectly fair. At some point, okay. You dudes are in, tr- in charge of the secrets of the United States of America. And if you can't be trusted to keep a, a national security briefing secret, then, you know, we have other, we have other bigger, more important things than, than, than you to worry about. So we'll give it to you in writing. But I, but I don't think, I think he jumped the gun by saying that's it, it's in writing. And, and by the way, I think it was also um, not in his own best interest to do so because it looks terrible. Yeah, he, he did two things. One, uh, I think the briefers in the government won't, don't want to do the briefings as well. Like they absolutely don't. I wouldn't want to do it if I were them because you're going into a very partisan space where one, one party wants you to say it's Russia. The other party wants you to say China's way worse. China's way worse, right? And to confirm the political narratives. So you don't want to do the briefing. So, you know, there is that element of it, but it does look worse because he also totally undermined himself to look like he doesn't know what he's talking about because his statement didn't answer the question. The question is around election interference. And he said, China's way worse of a national security problem than Russia. And I don't think anybody would probably argue with that, you know, on, on the whole, but the Chinese waste very little energy on the election because there's no bridge for him. They are running around the world right now doing all sorts of things, you know, as we kind of are wallowing in ourselves. I, for them, it's like, there's just very little to gain. It's not like Joe Biden is going to turn around and go, hey, we got to team up with China after the pandemic, right? This is never going to happen. And we're doing a lot of China watching. And it's interesting to watch the Chinese discussion in China, which is there is debate about who is better or worse for them. And I would say that they, they slightly favor Biden, but they're concerned as well about Biden. It's, the discussions are interesting. The business people in China see Trump and they like him because they're like, at least we can negotiate with this guy. He's a businessman and we can jockey back and forth. The you know, senior leaders of the Chinese government say, well, he's unpredictable and they like predictability. It lets them set a trend line. But Clint, isn't, isn't China is the only country that succeeded to take over social media from the US with TikTok? You know, it's the yeah, so the TikTok platform. thing is super interesting, right? It's the only one that doesn't suck that comes from afar and that Americans like, right? They love it. Um, and it does have data privacy issues and their algorithms, their AI is really good on TikTok. Yeah. That's why people are so like addicted to it, I think, like right away. And, and, they, and say, so- they say that it's, it's a way of uh, Chinese intelligence to, to uh, kind of like, um, you know, be inside the U.S. without, you know, an influence, maybe a lot of things. Sure. I mean, they, they can do that. It is making their AI better than ours. But I would tell you, any, any country right now that wants to influence the United States is just buying up all our data through a bunch of data brokers anyways. Like everything you put on Facebook or whatever can be, you know, acquired in a thousand different directions. Uh, you, if you talk to anybody who's doing like digital marketing, they're like, what do you want to know? And no yeah. one goes, but, but when oh, are you about, a foreign company? They go. Okay. What I'm worried about is that TikTok yeah. is kind of targeting the little generation, the, the young generation that's sure. not even into election yet. Nobody targeted that before. Like anybody from 12 to 15 is like huge in TikTok. So when you get the information early and try to influence that, that eventually could win them a you, lot of things. Sure, I, but you can do that on YouTube as well. I mean... It, if you want it, you can get it. I mean, I think that's what's remarkable that the Chinese, they kind of are like, yeah, TikTok is one thing we got and we'll, we'll totally use it. But they also know like, I'll just buy a stake in one of your companies and I'll, I'll get it that way, right? Like there's a more than one avenue to get that stuff and they're going to pursue all of them. Like they're, they're strategically thinking so far ahead. They're like, okay, you take TikTok now and I'm going to go by a media conglomerate in Mexico, <laughs> right? Like that we'll figure out another way to get in there and do it uh, hey, one way or another. Hey, Clint. Yeah. So we're friends and, you know, can I just tell you why I'm so dark and what actually I'm thinking about when, you, when you're talking about all this stuff? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So I've become really, really dark because I find that I just am not seeing the world the way 
a lot of friends of mine who are good people are seeing it and to the point where it, it, it gives me some self-doubt. I keep wondering if I'm, you know, deluded or biased or whatever it is. Or if, or if they're missing it or if it's somewhere in the middle. But I can't find common ground. And so I'll give you a few examples. But what I'm thinking about while we talk about Russia and disinformation, and, and I know that people are going to roll their eyes when I say this. And I say to myself, this is nothing compared to the disinformation I'm reading on CNN and the Washington Post every day. And, and I just give you a little example, you know, and, and you know, and just wish someone would tell me what I'm missing because I'd feel better. So just like, for instance, on this big issue of the mail-in ballots, right? Sure. So before, you know, b before this became a, a Trump issue, or do I have it here? Before it became a Trump issue, in the times in, uh, where, where is it, uh, 2012, they had an article, error and fraud at issue at absentee voting rises. And they had this paragraph. In the last presidential election, 35.5 million voters requested absentee ballots, but only 27.9 million absentee ballots were counted, according to a study of uh, Massachusetts and MIT. Uh, he calculated 3.9 million ballots requested by voters never reached them. Another 2.9 million ballots received by voters did not make it back to election officials. And the election officials rejected 80, 800,000 ballots, suggesting an overall failure of as much as 21%. So, so here's an article in the New York Times when it was not a, when it was not a, a partisan issue saying that at a time, you know, when it wasn't, when we weren't buried in mail ballots, but just like a normal predictable amount of ballots. We had a failure rate of as much as 21%. So then Republicans or Trump, whatever, say, listen, we have a problem here. Like this could be a total disaster of mail-in ballots. And then the Times will write an article now that, sell, that says their headline now is voting by mail is popular. So is the false idea that is ripe for fraud. I'm like, you know, you're going to have to do a lot of convincing to, to get me to say that the the headline that was written in the middle in the middle of the partisan craziness is the one I should rely on, and that the calm story that was written when you know nobody had a stake in it is the false one. And I'm like, well, if it's 21 percent of the ballots were bad in 2012, like what are we going to be up against here when you know people who old people, not smart people, people who don't read that well, are going to fuck up their ballots, and you're going to have ballots around like dollar bills and people are tempted to steal them. I mean, there's so much that could go wrong. When has a system ever worked right on its first trying? There's no, look at the Iowa caucus. I mean, this, this excess of optimism, as you know, Clint, everything fucks up from an excess of optimism. And all I'm seeing now is, and this is just one issue, Everybody's circling the wagons around this mail-in system because Trump is obviously criticizing it. So he has to be wrong. Ah, he's doing more than just criticizing well, undermining it. Well, Trump is yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not trying yeah. to. Yeah. I think that's where the problem lies. It's not. Look, but, 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 he, but if he pointed to valid data or whatever, my problem with what he is doing is just the Russian approach of question and conspiracy. And oh, by the way, what's going on at the post office is. It's madness right now. Like, okay, but, but, that doesn't but my, make sense. Okay, but what I'm saying is that if, if I never heard Trump say a word about this, I would show you that New York Times article and I would say, this looks like it's going to be a disaster. We, we, maybe we shouldn't be doing this. Maybe we should even be postponing the election until we can figure it out. And nobody would blink an eye and say, well, yeah, if that Times article is right, this is then Trump comes and says something which has no, has no effect on me I mean, I recognize his bad motives. I recognize everything you're saying, but it has no effect on, it ought not have any effect on my opinion of the underlying, underlying issue. Yet it does affect everybody's opinion of the underlying issue. And that's a distortion because it doesn't matter what Trump says. It doesn't change a thing as to whether it's true or not. Same thing with the post office. I mean, there was this five myths about the post of crisis in, in Politico and it just debunks everything. A it lot says of them. Yeah. yeah, the post office is, is swimming in money and everything that's being decommissioned was decommissioned prior, it was planned. And, and I mean, the, 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 the rate of the, the um, volume of mail is in half from what it used to be. I mean, literally, if you read the political article, 
there's nothing left to the post office um, scandal. And I'm like, wow, if Politico hadn't written this, not a single other mainstream media source had even looked into it. Like, like they, they, they clearly are happy about spreading the notion that, that the post office is, uh, you know, being undermined and can't be relied on and that Trump is doing it and he's doing it for political reasons and Trump's appointee is following it. They, they love this story and there's no basis in it if you believe political and political is not, you know, a conservative outlet. So I'm like, and I'm supposed to wear a Russian Facebook post. The, the Russians could never uh, accomplish this no, no, kind of it, thing. Everything is America made in this cycle. That's the first thing. Uh, I mean, there's. Am I missing any? Am I? Am I like? Am I getting any of these stories wrong? Because all my friends believe the post office is in, is, is totally a conspiratorial outlet, and they're sure that mail in mail in voting is going to be fine. Yeah. So here is where. Uh, on the Russia stuff or whatever, look, they don't need to write any fake news this time. They can cherry pick from whatever is being made inside the United States and just repurpose it and just narrowly target or whatever, which is what they're doing. So I, they're, they're almost an I mean, they're, they're trying to advance the Ukraine story and they can't even get people to pay attention to it because there's so much chaos in the U.S. <laughs> so like it, 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 they're almost perplexed this time. Like, how did we pull this off last time? And now we like literally can't advance anything in the U.S. audience space. And so they're just piling on or whatever. It's more like eroding our image around the world. That's where they're having more success right now. But that's only because of our own doing because we look so messy. My, my issue I take with um, how President Trump handles it is he is not running for office. He's the leader of those organizations. And so on mail-in ballots, for example, rather than throwing it out there, and this has happened with Department of Justice, uh, the CDC, you know, any of these, rather than throwing out these conspiracies that he does on Twitter, he actually is in charge of the organizations that can brief these things, right? And so mail-in ballots, totally depends on what state you're in. Some have been doing it for a long time, so there's no real issue about it. Like you said, this isn't their first time. They've done it many times and they got yeah, it worked people out. People fucked them up themselves. And look, sure. a, a Bush beat Gore because all these old people were voting for Pat Buchanan by accident. I mean, this can be, yeah. you know, it's serious. <laughs> yeah. And but that's always been there. So what, what I would re have hoped would have happened if I had had a, a, a series of leaders in the U.S. government that were worried really about the election integrity rather than like whatever their political stuff is, is turn to the Department of Homeland Security which has a group called CISA and say, we need an assessment of mail-in ballots in this amount of time. And they are, they are already doing it. They already, they already have it as their mandate, right? Instead, what they have to do is respond to conspiracy. And now they're not actually taking care of the election, right? They're just responding to conspiracy, trying oh. to work with the 50 states. Yeah. And they can point to, they could point right now to like, this state is doing it. I'll tell you one that does it really well that just sort of put it together was Arizona. Certain precincts in Arizona, we've got this all figured out. You get a text message when your ballot's going in, blah, 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 blah. And then there are other places which disaster, right? And so they're testing it out. But that is that is my issue with it. I think there's reason to question a lot of these things because they're happening really fast. Much like well, he the is, pandemic. He is in charge. So, so he so should like, be the one fixing it, right? He's in charge. So this Trump. is... Right. right, he's in charge. So, so of course, the the um, the the proper response for Trump would be say, look, we have a lot of problems with this. So let's devote all our resources and get the smartest minds in the world, and let's figure out how we can, to the extent that Solve we can. Okay. But what where the press and the and the opposition, political and and journalistic fails is that rather than say. Yes, you're absolutely right. This is, a, this is a disaster waiting to happen. So we demand that you, Mr. President, take care of this. And let's have hearings. What they find themselves doing is saying, no, 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 it's fine. The New York Times says, unfounded accusations. Like, like you, all you ever hear is like, what's he talking about? Mail-in ballots are perfectly reliable. And they find themselves reflexively saying bullshit because Trump said the opposite. And now if, if you speak to the average liberal, they will tell you, no, mail-in ballots, are, there's, there's no risk here. This is easy. 
And they're going to, you know. But I'm not going to mail my ballot in. <laughs> but the truth is going to bite them on the ass because sure. even with the best of intentions. And then, of course, on top of that, you have every hacker type in the world now trying to figure out how they can foil this mail-in ballot system, how they can print their counterfeit ballots, how they can affect the counting. They're going to try to figure out uh, what the systems are. I mean, obviously, in the end, these have to be punched into a computer somewhere. How do you get into those computers? I mean, uh, and I mean, this is, we're just, this is a really dangerous election we're heading I, into. I have, I have a theory. So, so, so dangerous. I think that maybe the better idea would be to have seven days of in-person voting, splitting it up, you know, six feet apart and, and not even take the risk. Um, and, you know, allowing, I guess, allowing absentee ballots, but that seems a lot. I mean, we, let's not kid ourselves. We, we, we say protests are okay. We say this thing is okay. We say that thing is all of a sudden voting is not a good reason to put on a mask and go out. Or there certainly ought to be a way to have people go to the polls with social distancing, the same way they go to the grocery store. I mean, people are going out and, and taking care of themselves and, and vote in person uh, to the extent that we can. That, that, that's what I would try to do if I were president, because this is really risky, I think. According to what the New York Times used to used to say, the old New York Times. I, I have a theory that I think both candidates are kind of worried that they're going to lose. So they want to... That's a good theory. <laughs> yeah, they, I, I really believe so. So I think they are <laughs> want something that they can have an out where they can be um, maybe, uh, you know, uh, lawsuits involved and, and all that, you know. So, I mean, that's the only thing that makes sense. But again, at the end, Trump is in charge, like you said, like you came up with like five good ideas right now, you know, like why can he, instead of point the problem is fix it. I think because they both really want to win, you know, they don't care about the country anymore. That's I, uh, well, I, I, I think part of the problem is just look, <laughs> I, I just know from people I know that have been in government, even if they're conservative or whatever, the frustration is long boiled over that you're you're reacting to your boss's tweets rather than like doing the mandate of your job, whatever it is, right? And so it's just, uh, it's interesting in a couple ways, like whether it's the pandemic or, or the protest is you could just solve the problem, right? <laughs> like That's exactly. the most interesting thing I find like with the pandemic is like, we kind of knew what to do and then we paid you know people money to stay home and then they still spread the virus right and we still didn't come up with a solution and then we're still trying to float the kind we were trying to do all these things other than like getting at the root of the problem and i remember this from the counterterrorism days we did a lot of this kind of stuff and it's just the natural way that politics sort of sorts it out and i've not really heard any ideas across the entire political spectrum about what we would do to get things going in 2021 right like let's say let's say this is for a job tryout like what are we actually going to do about everything from the pandemic to the economy to protests or these sorts of things and that is i think the most frustrating point is i, I really don't know if anyone is voted in charge right like uh, it doesn't matter which candidate one wins i think it's 50 50 anyways it's, what are we going to do on January, whatever, 22nd or what, day after inauguration to like make things better? Cause it doesn't seem like we've got a plan, you know, in, whether it's domestic or, or overseas or healthcare or the military, there's no real plan on any of these things to me. Um, um, the the pandemic is going to take care of itself. I think knock on wood one way or another, either through a vaccine or, herd immunity i mean they're, they're you know natural herd immunity like like sweden i mean there's no but it can't i don't think it can continue well, there was an article today that not, uh, you know uh, herd immunity in the u.s three million people will have to die for herd immunity no i i, I don't i don't i don't think that's that, you have to tell me that it's cnn so it must be right yeah but um i mean but but I, i'm not advocating that i'm saying it's going those there's there's no other way that it can be taken care of there'll either be a vaccine or there will be or it'll, weaker over or it'll time. make its way through the the country like it did in sweden now um sweden does seem to sweden has not been ticking up while the rest of europe is and of course you know as time goes by therapies get better and better and drugs get better and better but 
I, you know, there's no silver bullet to the pandemic. Like Germany has really beaten it down and now they're having mass protests and they're also ticking up a little bit. But the thing is, if there's no vaccine, Germany will have to live this way indefinitely. Otherwise, it'll just start back up again, right? So how long can a country do that? I mean, I, I read a lot about this and there's no good answers. I mean, there's just no good answers. And still America, as bad as it is, Britain's been worse, Sweden's been worse, Italy's been worse, you know, Brussels has been worse. We're not even, we're not very good. We're, we're a little bit better than France, even with our total incompetence. And it can change like just a little bit better than France. What's that? It can change so much. Like Israel was doing really good and now things are switching down. Well, you know, they measure these countries against themselves. So Israel might have a 20% jump. Germany might have a 20% jump, but that still puts them in another universe from how bad we are. I mean, they, they, their, their case fatality rate is, is probably like one-tenth per capita yeah. of ours still, you know? Yeah. So, you know... If there's anyway, a vaccine, would you take it, Norm? Absolutely. Like right now, you would take it? Yeah, of course I would. Clint, would you? Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Yeah. I, I, as long as it's going through the actual trials and it's not the, the Trump, hey... Here's my whiz bang thing this week. To, but they like, say that they're not going to take right? go through the third phase anyway. Yes, they're going through all the phases. They will. Operating Al Jazeera. <laughs> I, I saw a phase three today. Didn't that happen, Noam? There was a phase three trial. Yeah, yeah. One of them advanced. Yeah, I mean, if it goes through the process, and then yeah, I'll do it. There's actually a bunch of doctors that want to do an end. I'll do it right after you. <laughs> they don't. Try. I'm not taking it. The thing is that it's not like it'd be like one of the Star Trek episodes where you take the vaccine and then and then you immediately get sick with you know it turns into a monster. The risks are probably like 20 years from now, you'll drop that of cancer or something. Or I don't know. I'm, like, I'm afraid it's like the I'm legend in the, the army. Movie. Like I'm legend in the movie when they all took the vaccine for cancer and like a year later, they become zombies. So let me yeah. get, can I give you guys another example of where I'm really feeling down? Um, Thanks for lighting up the show. Yeah, go ahead. So, so let me, let me, let me, let me I'm reading from the New York Times. Let me just, uh, I, I, you know, I, I get so like self-conscious when I start reading out loud because I feel like I can't hold attention, but. Let me just read a little bit of it. So a dude, a, a, a black kid, right, is um, being chased by an unknown group of people into a parking lot, group, being chased by a group of white people. Uh, he, a gunman fires, he's chasing him. It's unclear why. And uh, the, 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 black dude, the black dude turns toward the, the gunfire or somebody lunges on him. The black dude shoots the guy who lunged on him and now is charged with murder. How does that sound to you? How does it sound to me? Not good. Yeah. I, sound, I mean, I, I don't have a lot of- Sounds like self-defense, right? Sure. Yeah, okay. so, so, so hold on. So, so what, depends, I just, yeah. what I just read from, to you- Oh, you're doing is, the Wisconsin scenario in reverse, is exactly right? from the New York yeah. Times. The, the only facts that we have it says, Mr. Rittenhouse is being chased by an unknown group of people into a parking lot. Well, you've while watched the video, right? Did you see yeah. the video? Wait, so, wait, so, so while Rittenhouse is being pursued by the group, an unknown gunman fires into the air, though it's unclear why. The weapon's muzzle flashes, appears. Mr. Rittenhouse turns towards the sound of the gunfire. As a pursuer lunges toward him from the same direction, he fires four times. Now, people on the right are saying that this is self-defense or looks like self-defense. And people on the left are losing their minds that anybody could say this might be self-defense. NPR writes a headline, Trump without evidence claims of self-defense. And I'm saying, I don't know, am I become a no, heartless? No, I, I did not. I've read that scenario. That's not, that wasn't my interpretation of it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I've watched well, the video as well. It was wait, very clear. Up, but was hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just saying, I'm reading from the New York Times. And these are the only facts... The only reliable facts we have. This is the one with the picture, right? Where it shows the guy yeah, yeah. in the crowd with the handgun. Yeah. And I'm saying that when I hear that a guy is being chased, now I don't know why he's being chased. Maybe, maybe if I knew why he's being chased, I'd feel differently. Maybe, maybe not. But we don't know why. He's being chased. Somebody, one of the chasers fires a gun. Then somebody lunges on him and he turns and shoots the guy lunging on him. I'm like, well, yeah, I, I might want to wait to trial before I decided you know, whether I thought the guy was a murderer, because if, if, a, you know, it sounds to me like he was very reasonable in thinking he was running for his life. And a bunch of people are chasing no, me and no. I hear a gunshot behind me and then somebody let us say, oh shit, you know, like, 
Like what? But yeah, it's not I, what happened. I still we have a different video. Hold on! Don't yeah. say it's not what happened because I'm we reading from the New York Times. But it, I, you can watch it. I, yeah, I've you can seen watch it. it. This is this is the description of the New York Times that well, they went wrong. through every single video. No, there's two. There was two engagements, uh, Hanum. This is the there first was, engagement. The first engagement is at the gas station, which they show a picture of. Uh, look, the person that fired the first shot. They should be charged with attempted murder. Like, and the yeah. guy that fires on the second one, he, I, the way I understood it from reading that, he did not hit the shooter. He just hit some random dude firing off rounds in a, in, in some direction. No, he, I don't he, think he shot the guy that lunged at him, right? No, <laughs> the way I interpreted it. So, my point is this. Oh, maybe you're right. We, yeah. So, a guy comes out of the crowd, fires a gun, sure. That, that guy should be charged and should be investigated. Second part, though, is a guy with an AR-15 swings around in a parking lot and just fires and kills what I understand to be an innocent, innocent bystander to this whole shooting situation just out there, gets shot. Then the kid goes and runs. This is what we saw on video, right, Hottam? Which mm -hmm. he's running down the street. I don't know why these people are chasing him. Like, I, I learned you don't chase guys with AR-15s, but whatever terrible confusing situation he grabs on him that dude spins around and shoots and that's the video we saw right on uh, you know if anybody want to form an opinion they have to understand it's an opinion and i think if you form an opinion you have to you can't form an opinion based just on the article you have to watch the video you have to watch everything the second thing is uh clint is a former um, military fbi i think from watching the video he have a certain um way of understanding more than anybody the way the kid was carrying the rifle the kid the way the kid was aggressive about it like a lot of things i i feel like clint would really understand from this video being with his background oh, well look hey uh, no is right to bring it up for another reason we're going to have more of these in the next 60 no days. no absolutely i'm not there's saying there's going to be I'm another saying, rally here on the i'm saying it's the same September. thing i tell like people when i i tell people yeah. would you ever vote for trump if i try to convince you and they were like no i was like so why you expect me to, uh, why you expect people to vote for Trump to change their mind? Nobody want to listen anymore. Nobody want to change their mind. Everybody was just defensive, you know. Uh, so anyway, I want to. I want to move to the election. Your prediction, Cole? Fifty-fifty. Yeah, ten days ago, I would have thought it was Biden. Today, I would. I think it's Trump. So, yeah, we'll see. It comes down to only six states. That's all that really matters, you know, in the contest. So, do you think if we have somebody other than Kamala Harris, it would have been a better choice? It would have been no. better for him. Well, not really. Not really. I think it's fine. I, I'm not one who believes big that VP picks like swing elections unless it's somebody that's like really, really, really strong. And I always think back to like when I was a kid and they would make a VP pick and then I can't even remember who it is now. It's like 10 or 20 years ago. I have to really think back. Like yeah. Dan Quayle. I have a struggle to even remember anything he ever said other <laughs> than like goofy Saturday Night Live skits. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think um, what I'm most depressed about in terms of the election is that it will continue on past election day and that I don't really know that either person will have a strong mandate to govern come January at a time when our country has like a ton of problems that we need to work through. I think that's what I'm most disappointed about at this point. I'm not sure that either outcome will render any positive momentum, if that makes sense, yeah. in one direction or another. All right, I, I know I you have to go. I, I think have a question will win. Uh, by the way, we, we, we didn't get to the second shooting. And the second shooting is a, is a much less favorable account to, to Rittenhouse. I think we never even got there. So I'm not uh, – the second, the second shooting um, – uh, No, I, I, I think what my – just so you know, from my perspective, yeah. I don't uh, – on self-defense charges and haven't worked through that at the FBI, I don't um, have a strong – sympathy for people that put themselves and arm themselves in dangerous situations as self-defense if that makes sense yeah yeah but that's the sympathy is i don't either i don't have any I'm, sympathy is you know i don't i don't have well i mean i don't have sympathy for um violent criminals who fight with the cops and resist arrest and put the cop, yeah but they still yeah. have their rights they sure. still have their rights and that's why uh, it goes yeah. to trial and everything and the people will decide right or yes and you I think you said it, it. And me both, uh, me and Clint weren't furious. So we were fine with it. No, I upset Clint and, I'm, and I feel bad about it because. No, I, my, my, where I was getting frustrated with Noam is 
the comparison from where you started the conversation on the mail in ballots and then the interpretation of the situation, which is, it seemed like the same exact thing to me. Like your frustration with the media seems like you were doing the same thing in terms of the situation with the shooting. Well, what, yeah. what, no, let, so let me, okay, and this will be the last thing. I, I see it the opposite. What I see, what I think I'm doing in both situations, in the first situation, I'm saying, everybody's saying this crazy stuff about the mail and stuff. I look at the times and I see these facts and I'm saying, well, based on these facts in the times, this sounds like this mail and stuff could be a real problem. Everybody's saying this kid's a murderer and anybody says his self-defense is some sort of monster. And I look at the times and I say, well, based on these facts in the times, I could totally see how it's self-defense. I'm not saying it's self-defense because there's six minutes prior, we're going to get testimony on and, and, and everything very reliable. But I'm saying just as a disinterested, just going on the facts in, on both these issues as presented in the New York Times, I see reasonable positions here that shouldn't make people pariahs for wanting to discuss it and God forbid disagreeing. My God, you like this, there's, there's, there's a, there's a, a, a received wisdom you're supposed to have on everything now. Clint, what do you, what do you have going on the next uh, couple of months? I'm sorry, Clint. You know, I love you. It's fine. It's fine. Yes. I love you too, Noam. I'm not going <laughs> to forget about it. Clint, this. don't forgive him. What, one, yeah, one, yeah, one yeah, yeah. came here. Say hi. My wife came here. And my wife went to... to, to uh, hi, Clint. Juanita, how are you? It's been a while. <laughs> it has been a while. Yes. I have, I have some, all our friends and you can add Clint to that list. Juanita, can you host the next show? <laughs> What? What's that? You host the next show. You were great. <laughs> no, I'm just pissing people off. I would totally host the show. I, I, I want to say something about this shooting. We need to change the gun laws. These are, it's just so ridiculous. Agree. What law allows at a protest where there's so many people for all these people to be armed? He was not the only person armed at this protest. No, there were 16 other shots. It's just in Mo Most people were probably armed. Yeah, yeah, that they allowed uh, all these guns at such a large gathering. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just a mess. But that's the thing. There's a game theory. That if most people are probably armed, then you begin to understand then everybody why he carried a gun. That's yeah. right. I mean, I would... watch, the 20, watch the 26th of September in Portland. You're going to see madness yeah. uh, yeah. unfold. So. Yeah. What are you going to watch the election this year? Uh, I'm going to do a I, live, I would love to, a live but election. I'm, uh, I'm going to be working that night this year. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to have a live show that night, so maybe... You Are you guys going to do it? Do you guys think you'll open by then? To a limited... Not live show, like, like live in uh, Instagram. No, November, um, I would say the the olive tree, I give it 60-40 uh, no. But I think, I think this is a substantial chance that when the weather gets cold, they may allow some limited... Yeah, I, it value. seems like Cuomo opened up a lot of indoor stuff, at least upstate here. Like, the, upstate. people sitting inside. Yeah. Yeah. And whatever. Sorry. Sorry. But, but I meant what I said. I, I really do love you, Clint. You're one of my favorite people. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm not, no, I'm extent, not going to... To the extent that I deserve your anger, then I... I, I, I no, no. I, I mean, to the extent I'm that I can't, I, can't, I can't see myself, nobody can. I've also and, been but, up for hours. So. Yeah. But to the extent yeah. that I'm, I, I do deserve your, your anger, then, I, then I, I, I would have never done that purposely. I'm sorry. So go ahead. A couple of drinks and we all forget about this. Oh, yeah. No, no. You, 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 <laughs> I've you can't be around somebody's drinking. <laughs> all right. I can be around somebody's drinking. <laughs> yeah, 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 you can. That's true. <laughs> don't, don't come armed. <laughs> yeah, don't bring a weapon into it. All right, I got to go. We have, I have, I have, I have to do, do, do a documentary about comedy. Okay. Bye, All everybody. Right. Be safe. Good luck to you guys. Safe. Thanks for having me on, and good luck to Comedy Seller here, it, as always, if I can help. Do you want to share your information, call, uh, Clint? I'm going to leave while he does it. Bye. Bye. I have to go. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, follow me on Twitter, at Selected Wisdom. Yeah. And uh, that's it. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Quinn, and uh, sorry for uh, Norm has been going through dark times, but uh, um, I scheduled that. No, 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 it's fine. Thursday Look, it's a good discussion. It's heated times. Uh, hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we can talk again. He understands my point. You can't yeah, yeah, ho ho argue so. about opinions on, on one article. That yeah, no, but I, so. I, I, see, I see where you're coming from, that the different, the two different, you know, scenarios that he used, it's, it's totally, uh, I, I understand that. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, it's great to have you always, and hopefully I'll see you soon uh, at the cellar or whatever when things are open. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's let's stay in touch until the election.
we're gonna have a special on the election night i think like like this like Zoom okay night. well definitely let me know because i'll be working that night yeah so but people will if you want to talk to info stuff or whatever hit yeah me okay great thank you so much all right take you, care, you mean election week by the way oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> all right take care